In this video, we will discuss average atomic mass. Before we get to that, we have to talk a bit about isotopes. Depending which day you have your lab period, you may have already heard about isotopes. But in case you haven't, we'll do a quick overview. Here we see one form of isotope notation for the isotope carbon-12. The top number is called the mass number, and it is the sum of the number of protons and neutrons in the atom's nucleus. So this isotope of carbon has a combined total of 12 protons and neutrons. The bottom number is the atomic number, and it's the number of protons in that atom. If we look at the periodic table, we can also find the atomic number for carbon as well as any other number. Let's take a closer look at carbon. This is what the carbon block on your periodic table should look like. There are three pieces of information in this block. Some periodic tables will have more information, but these are the basics you'll need throughout this year. The letter in the block is the symbol for the element. Here we see the capital letter C for carbon. Above the elemental symbol, you'll see a whole number, which is the atomic number that we saw before. Some tables may have this number somewhere else, but it will always be the smaller number and will always be a whole number. The bottom number is the average atomic mass. It is bigger than the atomic number and includes decimals. Note the average atomic mass does not equal the mass number. So then you might ask, what is it? I'm so glad you asked. Let's take a look. So different atoms of a given element have different numbers of neutrons, giving each atom a different mass number. When we're looking at a single atom or isotope, the mass number allows us to calculate how many neutrons that atom has. The number of protons for a given element will remain unchanged. Since most of an atom's mass is contained in the nucleus, we could then determine the mass for that isotope, which would be very close to the mass number. So here we see carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14. Carbon-12's mass number is 12, so the atomic mass for carbon-12 will be about 12. 13's mass will be about 13, and 14's mass will be about 14. However, since different isotopes behave the same chemically, chemists would rather work with elements and not individual isotopes of an element. So we need to have a mass for an element that will account for all isotopes of that element. Looking at the three isotopes of carbon we see here, you might be thinking we should take the average of the mass numbers. In fact, that's exactly what we do. However, not all isotopes are created equally. Some exist in large amounts, while others are hardly present. And wouldn't it be fair for the isotope that barely exists to have an equal contribution to the total element's mass? Instead, we do a weighted average in which the mass of the more abundant isotope has a larger role than that of the less abundant isotopes. Let's look at carbon for an example. Here we see what we call the relative abundance of the three isotopes listed. There are other isotopes, but they are so in common they don't affect the average atomic mass. Carbon-12 is the most abundant of carbon's isotopes, with 98.9% .9 of all carbon ab atoms being the carbon-12 isotope. That is, they contain six neutrons and six protons. 1.1% are carbon-13, and less than 0.1% are carbon-14. Since carbon-14 is less than 0.1%, it's not going to affect the mass enough for us to consider here with our calculations. To calculate the average atomic mass, we also need to know the masses of the isotopes. This number will be given to you as it's given to you here on the slide. It's close to the mass number, but not exactly, except for carbon-12. The units you see here, AMU, stand for Atomic Mass Unit. It's a unit of mass defined as one twelfth of the mass of a carbon-12 atom. Hence, carbon-12 is exactly 12 AMU, while other isotopes have masses containing decimals. Now to calculate average atomic mass. There are three steps in this process. Step one, we need to turn the percentages into decimals by dividing each by 100. So we end up getting 0.989 and 0 
Again, carbon-14 is such a low abundancy for the isotopes of carbon that it's not going to affect our calculation that much, so we're going to ignore it for now. The second step is multiplying that decimal that you just calculated by the mass of the respective isotope. And the masses, again, will be given to you. So we're going to take 0.989 times 12 AMU and 0 0.011 times 13.0034 AMU. Step three, now that we have the weighted masses of each isotope, we add them up. When you add them up, you will get your average atomic mass for that element. In this case, for carbon, we get 12.01 AMU, atomic mass units. And if we look at our periodic table again, that's what it says, 12.01. Notice that the average atomic mass we calculated is closest to the mass of the most abundant isotope, which in this case, the most abundant was carbon-12, which had a mass of 12 AMU. So that's where the average atomic masses on the periodic table come from. In class tomorrow, you'll practice calculating this value. In the following video in class, you will see how we can use this number in other calculations.